you saw there that this thing isn't able to rewind anything anymore. And I've looked online and it appears to be a uh, certain rubber roller which hardens up over time and therefore isn't grippy enough anymore to carry the weight of the tape. So I bought a new one. There is nothing you can do to recondition the old rubber, so it's quite pricey. I paid 15 euros for it, but you know, it saves me the hassle of having to rewind it by hand. So the rubber wheel is buried right down in here, and to gain access, we'll have to remove this which appears to be countered on the shaft. This is also really interesting. They uh, actually made almost like a collared chuck to fasten the main roll on the axle of the motor. So the bore in here is tapered. Then there is this sleeve which has slits cut in it. Whoops. It goes in here. The shaft goes through there. And with this nut you screw the sleeve further in, thereby compressing it and locking it tightly onto the shaft. You could use this as a drill chuck. curious and being me of course I am also going to take the back cover off just to see what's inside. There are the very early kinds of printed circuit boards that are not really printed but actually really soldered traces. This is all solder on here, all these paths. And you can see there is no uh, real structure on here. It looks like an old city, basically, with, you know, contacts running from A to B without any real system. But, you know, it's fascinating to see. And um, well, maybe we can get a look at uh, the components. Someone has been in here because the... The red paint on here is already broken. Oh, it, it swings. That's interesting. Well, apart from that rubber wheel, this thing is really well engineered. I mean, who thinks about such a design? Here are all the transistors that basically do the amplification. These are the switches uh, for record and normal play, so they switch around the electronics to uh, remove tone or to play tone onto it. And this right here is the AC to DC converter section with all the filters and the fuses in there. And now I'm glad we opened this because there's actually a blown capacitor right in here. So you can see that it has blown this one out. 
And I'm going to replace this one as well because it's also 100 microfarad and right over here there's one too. Um, I'm not going to replace the other ones because they're 1000 microfarads or 2500. On tube radios you usually do not have that high capacities. The highest you will stumble across is 100 microfarads. So that's what I can replace, that's what I'm going to replace. And you know, this thing is in almost daily, maybe weekly use. So if they didn't blow out by now, then they're possibly not going to blow out anytime soon. <laughs> Let's see how the new things are doing. So, seems like it's working again. Replacing the wheel itself was maybe a five minute job and the most time was taken by having to remove all these little knobs here. You know, definitely worth it, although the small part is a little bit pricey, but hey, that is going to save you a lot of effort. Thank you for watching, bye bye.